Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all you beautiful ballad people out there, I am your host, Jay, and I'm here with my friend and co-host. It is I and everybody. Jay, do you remember the number of this episode? Uh, well, you just said last one was 99. Yeah. So this one's 99.5. You got it, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, yeah, this is the 100th episode. Technically, it's not, but it is. Um, We're going to call it the 100th because that makes it sound better. Yeah, well, because, you know, last one was 99, the next one we want to Well, we did the decimal points, so that takes away 41. from the 41.3, yeah. Uh, like, we're not counting um, Con Air because Con Air isn't necessarily Homestuck. It's just Homestuck tangents. That's this very tangents debatable. Um, but the 41.3 videos we actually did read Homestuck in and made progress, so there's technically 101 videos, including this one. But it's numbered 100, so it's the 100th video, everybody. <laughs> Ayy. And because of that, we decided to do something cool that everybody in the Discord's been wanting us to do for a long time. And some of you in the comments, we've seen the your comments. Don't worry. Zodiac quiz. This yeah. is very terrifying. Look at it. We've been told that it's now almost no longer spoilers, and the only thing that's technically spoilery is the doom sign. But, but who cares? They've collectively, the Discord, decided that it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so if the, the Doom sign might come up, come up, which is the only um, aspect that we haven't seen the sign of. Uh, and since the the reveal of the Lime Bloods, this, you know, because you can see... Also, this is another thing that somebody said in the comments that I'd rather have not been told explicitly, but, you know, um, I'm not sure if Jay's seen it, that um, Carcat is a mutant Lime, but, lime Blood. Yeah, that's what K Kankri was saying. Didn't Kankri say something about that? Did he say that? Yeah, Kankri said something about that. I'm going to be honest, I must not have paid full attention, which I'm sure you can't blame me yeah, for. Yeah, Kankri was just um, like, if we hadn't been mutated, we both would have been Lime Bloods. And I was like, oh, huh. that's interesting. I didn't realize that was explicitly stated. Cool. Because, like, people were saying that's like, oh, this is, I'm pretty sure this is implicit, and it, you know, but... Cool. <laughs> see, I'm a genius, Ian. Yeah, okay. Anyways, yeah, so we can see Carcat's, like, just the cancer symbol in the top of the, the Lime Blood column here. If I don't but get Carcat's symbol, then what am I anymore? Well, you, you won't, because you're Taurus. Quiet, nerd. <laughs> no one asked for your opinion. <laughs> Alright, uh, anyways, we should get into this. So, yeah, so this is the Extended Zodiac website, um, and there are a lot a lot of signs on here. Yes, uh, sir, and right? We're going to take the test. I think we're, how we're going to do this, we're going to start with Jay since he's recording. And um, and then after he's done, then we'll do me. Yeah. All right. Want me to read all this then? Uh, sure, if you want to. Introducing the Extended Zodiac, an updated astrological profile for an expanding world. I already hate that voice. Unlike the <coughs> traditional Zodiac, this system takes into account certain features of your personality and perspective rather than simply the day you were born. By taking the test, you may determine which of the 288 signs below is your true sign. There's like a million signs down there. It's 288. There's a million, not that many. You're lying. It's 12 times 24. Hmm. 12 columns, 24 rows. You're such a math nerd, man. Okay, go to the bottom, actually, because there's Find out what your true sign text. is. Take the test now. Oh, there's more down there. Yeah. There's more. No, oh, this isn't even all of them. There's more. No, no, I mean, it's, I think the... So it's view that, full that, list. That, it's definitely 288. I'm pretty sure the full list is just, like, looking at all of them. Oh, that's fair. Maybe. I don't know. Fair enough. Do you want to continue reading, or do you want me to? Uh, you can read this. Okay. The extended zodiac is broken down into 12 color categories called sign classes, and each of those contain 24 unique signs. In order to discover your true sign, you must identify two additional qualities about yourself, which are unique to the extended zodiac. The first is your lunar sway, a designation which says things about your perspective on life. There are two possibilities for your for lunar sway. The second is your aspect, the ruling force of, over your personal narrative. Think of it as the source of your power, the way that you move through the world. Uh, there are 12 possible aspects. Lunar sway and aspect are assigned based on character traits and tendencies, and in order to determine yours, you will need to take a couple of brief personality tests. You will uh, then be identified as one of the 288 signs of the extended zodiac. Your true sign will include a much more specific and personal astrological profile than your birth sign alone conveys. Find out what your true sign is. Take the test and, now. Yep. Yeah, so Lunar Sway is like Durst versus um, Prospect Dreamer, right? So. 
Sign a zodiac expands on the meaning of your traditional zodiac sign by determining your true sign. First, select your birth sign according to the traditional zodiac, or you can pick the sign that you most closely identify with. You can... <laughs> I mean, you could technically pick... I think. I mean, I, I'd go with Taurus, but like... What if I don't... What if I, I, I'm, I find I mean, myself to be more of a cancer, you know? Do you, do you know astrology enough to be able to make that call? Hell no. I don't. Hell exactly. no. Exactly. <laughs> That's just funny. That's, that's like that's like the most PC thing that Halsey's ever said. If, or you can pick the sign that you most closely identify with. <laughs> you should have signed Goddamn to Cancri, why are you? <laughs> no. Cancri over here writing the entire quiz. Like, just so you guys know, we're not meaning to be offensive. So if you don't identify as something else, let us know. <laughs> signs refer to an entire category of signs. Ta I'm a Taurus. I forgot I was a Taurus. <laughs> you forgot you were a Taurus. That means your true sign is one of the signs below. To find out which con which continue taking the test. Great fans of luxury drawn signs crave safety, stability, and creative comfort. And creature comfort. Creature. Wait a minute. This doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> Though naturally withdrawn, they are warm and generous friends and stubbornly devoted partners. They are animal lovers delighted in pets' unconditional esteem. I'm, a, I'm okay with that part. You'll learn more about what it means to be a, a bronze sign when you see the final results of the test. I don't know, man. So far, that seems to describe you. Hmm. I think you're a warm and generous friend, Jay. Safety. Stability. These are none of the things I have. No, but it says crave. It doesn't say have. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Now you will need to determine your lunar sway. This test tell, tells whether you are a prospect dreamer or a durst dreamer. Either one says something about your perspective on life and the world around you. Finding out your, out your lunar sway is one of two critical pieces of information needed to determine your true sign. For each perspective, for each question below, choose the answer that most cl closely reflects your perspective. Here, I'm going to write down my answers along with you so that we can just go through it and, you know, I don't have to, like... I'm not, like, swayed by your, you necessarily. That's fair. Some people on the internet, you know, you know, are negatively discussing something you hold dear. You could just let it slide, or you could get in there and defend it with your life. How do you respond? So, so some people on the internet, you know, are negatively discussing something you hold dear. Mm -mm. I could leave it alone. Well, I, what do I do? I don't know what you do. I've not seen you do this. This is fair. Well, I mean, of course, in the Discord when they're saying things that I don't like, I yell at them. But that's different. Right? Is that D or E, then? If you yell at them. I'll die on a hill for the things I like. I love to argue in the defense. That's part of the fun you have, Pat. That's part of the fun of having passion for things. Hmm... Yeah, this sounds like a, a hill I'd die on. <laughs> Jay is more stubborn than I. I would I would do D. I'm okay with dying on a hill. <laughs> it's probably a good hill, right? Like a really pretty one with like the sun setting and stuff. You're all set to cook dinner. Well, this question doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't even know how to use an oven. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I do, but they're it's kind of weird. I don't know. Well, let's pretend you do. When you realize you're you are missing a couple of cre key ingredients from the recipe you're using, what do you do? Toss out the recipe completely and wing it. Find a different recipe that you have all the ingredients for. Honestly, depends on what I'm cooking. It's something I've made before, etc. Follow the recipe and make a, a couple of substitutions. Use it as a guideline. Go to the store and get the ingredients you're missing. What's the point of having a recipe at all if you don't follow it? What do you think? Hmm. I know my answer. I'm thinking. What do you do? Uh, so... These kind of, like, tests, by the way, like, I do this with, like, the 16 personalities test, like, every test like this. I immediately know the answers to almost every question. <laughs> That's the kind of person I am. Oh, you freaking genius. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's just, I'm very, I'm, I don't know, I'm very... What, what, what I I'm think, so impulsive. I guess C E then, right? E, for you? Yeah. Sure. Sure. What's know. your reasoning behind it? Just curious. Just, you know, so that Because, people like, know. why don't... If you're missing stuff, then why don't you just go back to the store, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm A all the way. Just do something. I, I, I'm a person, I'm it. like, well, okay, well, 
I've literally just like I didn't I didn't look I don't look up recipes very often. I'll just like I tried making uh, peanut sauce for 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 pasta once. It turned out pretty good, but I just completely won't get it. I'm like okay, um, peanut butter, water. <laughs> so I mix it together, throw some digital yeast in, maybe some vinegar. Mm-hmm. It turned out pretty good. Oh yeah, but yeah, I'm A all the way. But you're E, sure. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, how do you feel meeting online per- and in person for the first time? A, only excited. We already know and like each other. Nothing to worry about. B, quite positive. Things are going to go fine. C, good, but you'll see how things go. Hard to say until you've met someone. D, a bit nervous. You like them or are looking forward to it in theory. Anxious, even though you've gotten along online, you can't help but worry how it'll go in person. A. Yeah, I'm a huge extrovert. A is all the way because I do like to think that I am good at sniffing out the vibes of people, and I can usually tell when there's something suspicious going on. I'm going to show on. up and miss you getting one of these days, and I'm just going to be a 40-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and plus, like, I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm good at handling if that situation happened anyways, because I, I am, I'm a person to take, to take charge and, you know... Just yeah, kick me in okay. the shins and run away if that's what happens. But yeah, we're both A. A. You're having a hard time grasping a topic in class that everyone else seems to be fine with you. Raise your hand immediately <laughs> to straighten things out. This'll never happen to me. Come on. <laughs> Say. <laughs> I'm kidding. B, lean over and ask a friend. They'd probably be happy to explain it to you. C, email the professor. D, do your own research. Or E, do something on... I'd lean over and ask a friend for sure. C. Because I get all nervous whenever I, like do it like it's not the fact that i'm actually nervous it just like it, it's i don't want to interrupt anything and if they're in the middle of yeah. a lecture i'll be like what does that mean like to somebody i shouldn't so i, I, I shouldn't going. do this but d is what i do i i jot down what it is i don't understand i go home and then i just do way too much research on it <laughs> all right you start taking lessons to learn something you've wanted to two for a while a language class art class bartending lessons bartending lessons that'd be dope hey. yeah <laughs> Not that I ever Jay, let's drink. be bartenders. Hey, <laughs> Let's open up a bar at I and a J bar. Come on. <laughs> we'll call it puzzles. Why? Th- that's the puzzle. We don't know why. <laughs> I stole that sure. from How I Met Your Mother, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> we'll call it puzzles. I've yet to see that show. It's such a great show. Um, I've heard. We, we do need to be... We need to be... We need to open a bar, Ryan. Yes, I just I just saw. We'll name um, it Iron and J because we don't know how to name things. <laughs> yeah, I just saw my my answer so far, and it's D A A D. So my answer spells Dad. Well, you have one of those, you fuck. <laughs> um, but decide a few weeks in that it, de- that it definitely isn't your thing. You decide to stick it out though. Why? Never know. It might grow on you. Spent money and time on this already. You're gonna finish it. It's already on your schedule for the next couple weeks, and you don't want to move stuff around. You aren't a quitter. You dedicate yourself to something you're going to do. It doesn't matter how hard it is. E. If you stop, it means that you didn't like this thing as much as you thought you did, which means you didn't know yourself the way you thought you did. D. All the way. Well, none of these describe me. I just ghost the class and just leave. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> yeah. I- I just wouldn't show up. I would quit. Uh, <laughs> okay, but if if um the real answer is probably B. Um, the only reason is because I I had spent money, mm-hmm. and I need the credits if that's the case because I can't spend money and then not get credits out of it. Definitely. So I'm gonna say B, but I definitely realistically would ghost the class and not show up. When you're on holiday, do you prefer to leave your itinerary mostly up to chance, or do you plan it out ahead of time? A. Hmm. I think B, because I do like doing, like, minimal planning. I'm like, okay, so there's these things I want to do. Um, well, yeah, that's then, true. I mean, don't let me, like, convince you. No, you're I'm not convincing your guy, me, but, but I'm just, like, thinking, like, how would I yeah. do I don't go on vacations very often is the thing. Yeah, i just be like, okay, so we're going to do this and this over the span of these, like, two weeks or whatever, and it doesn't, doesn't really matter you know, what else. yeah, it's probably going to be B for me now that I think about it. I was just thinking, I didn't even read B at first. I was just like, A. Hey. <laughs> if you say so. A, fr- All right. a friend of yours and someone you don't know are caught up in a heated argument. They've asked you to help facilitate. I want to support your friend, but after hearing both sides, you actually agree with the stranger. How do you choose? Who do you? How do you choose to, who to support? 
Sorry with your friend all the way. Friendship is more important. Friendship is magic. <laughs> Yeah, Highlight right, eh? anything about your friend's side that you do agree with and tactfully don't mention the rest. Look for a neutral angle that supports both sides in a different way. You delicately disagree with your friend while doing everything you can to show you still support them. You fully side with a stranger. The truth is important, even if it risks hurting friendship. I'm a D person. I'm definitely a D person. Yeah, because, like, like, I mean, friendship's important, but I, I also, it, like, I pride myself in being able, being able to get along with people I don't agree with, so I think I'd be very... I think in that situation, I would definitely be like, hey, so, like, I love you, you great person. I don't quite agree with what you're saying here, and here's why, you know? Yeah, like, um, what if your friend's a Nazi or something, you know? See, I think that ex- is a bit of extreme, but, you know, sure. <laughs> if you say so. All right, number eight. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be friends with a Nazi. Hopefully. Um... <laughs> All right, you have a very important message to write over email or some other text communication method. It's a sensitive matter, difficult to compose, possibly of an emotional or confrontational nature. When you're done writing it, you're about to hit the send button. Oh, God. What next? Click it. You click immediately, better get it over and done with quickly. Not just yet. You give it one more read, maybe change a couple things, then send away. After giving another read, you decide to take some time and come back to it later with fresh eyes. Maybe you have a friend read it, too, before sending. Well, I know which one I in is. You save a draft and <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. on it. When you look at it again, or you might have a second thoughts about sending, or you might rewrite it all together. E, you save a draft to revisit later. I think I'm an A person. I was going to say, I literally sent Jay a copy of a message I was going to send someone. So I'm C. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely an A person because I like to just get things over with. Right. I don't really like overthink things very much. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. Boop. Ooh, Durst streamer. I'm a Durst person. So here's a question, actually. Because it says aspect, we're doing aspect next. Do we want to, like, open a new tab and get my leader's way first, or do you want to do your entirely? Let's first? go ahead and do that. Okay. That way we don't, like, take, like, an, an extra, like, 15 minutes get going through all your stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's just because I can just enter, enter my stuff in. So I'm a Sagittarius, and they go sign. Sagittarius. There it is. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and so and I'll just read you my answers. There were D, D, A, A D, A, A A and then D. Two A's. Yep, yeah, and then D, and then B, and then B again, then D, then and C, and then C. Yeah. A couple different answers, but mostly pretty simple. Oh, I'm prospect. Wow. My answers were different enough to give me a prospect. Interesting. Jay, let's play Spur. <laughs> I hate you. God, I hate okay, you so, so much. Wait, so, so let's read Durst, uh, and then let's read Prospect. So. Durst streamers are skeptical, rec- restless, and prone to rebellion. Hey! <laughs> Valuing rational thought and calculation. No. Wrong. <laughs> Tend to know um, themselves far better than they know the world around them. I'm not that rational. Okay, so rational, I do think, is a very relative term. I think, do, is your, like, thought process, like, self-consistent? What do you mean? Like, like, I think that does describe you knowing you, because you do... Because rational is relative. And, I, and, I, and, like, I know things can be more rational than others, of course. Um, mm-hmm. But rational thought, like, I do think you do carefully consider your situation, carefully consider everything that's going on, do make a calculation. Mm-hmm. And I think that is something, and, and like the next sentence, they tend to know themselves uh, far better than the world, than they know the world around them. Yeah. And, and... Learn more about... I could see that. Like, I yeah, obviously I don't... See, I, I, th- I think I'm more just thinking from the character that I portrayed more than my actual fucking being person. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and well, you got to finish your. Oh yeah. Set. Now you only determine your aspect, the result of the set. Oh cells. okay. Okay, let's just go ahead. And well, I, I don't think you read finding it difficult to live in the moment, but that's okay. Oh yeah, I need to do this. Finding <laughs> it difficult to live in the moment. You'll learn more about what it means to be a dirt streamer when you fi- see the final results of the test. All right. Prospect. Prospect dreamers are intuitive, flexible, and accepting. They tend to live in the moment and, and ad- able to adapt to situations as needed. They prefer to solve problems with creativity rather than cold logic. You will learn more what it means to be a prospect dreamer when you see the final results of the t- of the test. Oh, just go okay, ahead. so that's 
Cool. Well, yeah. So okay. So so Dave, this is interesting. Do you see the aspects? Oh, there's the doom sign. What that one? I said that one, the one with the blood. No, that's that's oh, the blood. Oh wait, sign. the one on the right. No, yeah. that's the time sign. No, that, that that one's the time sign. Where's the doom it's sign? Bottom bottom left under. Oh, void. cool. Yeah. We haven't seen that because we've seen all the rest. The top is breath, then going clockwise. Life, light, time, heart, rage, blood, doom, void, space, mind, hope. Cool. Hey, I know them. Okay. That one's hope. That's yep. cool. I know cause that's that's Jake's. All right. So continuing with the test. All right. Um. Okay, it is Jake, right? I'm not making that up. Yeah. You... I think I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Now you will need to determine your aspect. The result of this light of this test tells you whether your aspect is breath, blood, life, doom, light, void, time, space, heart, mind, rage, or hope. By the way, I do think I didn't say this, but I do think the prospect one pretty pretty well describes me. I think I do use a little more logic than straight up the prospect dreamer, but I definitely use a lot of I do a lot of emotion creativity into that. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's interesting because I think Jay also slightly would identify with prospect, but I think mostly Durs. So it's like mm -hmm. that yin yang situation where you know you're yeah. mostly Durs have a little bit of prospect and vice versa for me. Yeah. All right. Let's continue. Finding out your aspect is the final <laughs> piece of information needed to determine your true sign. For each question below, choose the answer that most closely reflects your personality. One, think about your life as if it's a story and you're the main protagonist. I am the main protagonist, <laughs> you fuck. I'm it's not a your protagonist. I'm not even my own. <laughs> oh, shit. That song's so good, but holy shit, it's that so line. Good. Shout out to Penelope Scott. I we, love her so we much. We love Penelope She's underrated. Scott. Cigarette Owie Gal. Um... Well, that song was uh, Sweet Hibiscus no. Tea, but... Yeah, I definitely know th which song that was. <laughs> I'm just saying Cigarette Alley Gal is probably my favorite from Penelope. I love it. But do you tend to view yourself as a lonely hero who along the way meets other supporting characters who only have a tang tangen tangential relation to your personal journey? Or do you view yourself as just one hero in an ever-shifting ensemble protagonist? Hmm. I wish I could say E. Like... That's where I'd want to be, but I think I'd have to say D. Mm. I, <laughs> I'm gonna be sound like a dick. Oh no! Don't don't worry about it. Say whatever you want. Mm. Good. My thing is that I everyone starts that way, right? Where they're just like all alone, and then oh, yeah. they meet people along the way, right? Yeah, and, and Jay, this is all about your perspective on things, right? Like, Obviously, you know, there's no correct answer. I don't so find don't myself care. to just, be a loner, answer. but at the same time, I don't find myself to be really a, of an ensemble either. Probably either one then, right? Either one? Maybe. Either I, want, I mean, it's, it's either B if or you, C. If, if you would lean B, I'd probably recommend doing B, uh, just because I usually a lot of the neutral answers don't have a big impact on things. Uh, and just because, like, I, you know, I don't want you to, like, have reservations because, you you know, because people might not like the answer or something. Yeah, but, I just, yeah, like, I, think, I, I, think... I definitely find myself to be one of those people, right, where I've met people definitely from choices that I've made, and then mm -hmm. they've become part of the main cast of my life yeah. because of the choices that I made. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I definitely understand what you're saying because I'm D, not E. Like, I wish I could say E because I feel like E, it would be the kind of person I want to be, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, thinking equally of everybody, but I definitely say D because I do have those moments where I'm like, oh, you know, these, you know, like, the results of my actions or things like that, and it's kind of hard to separate that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think by and large I'm D. So that's, that's a cool, that's cool. All right. All right. When you want to help people accomplish something and they don't know what they're doing, are you inclined to show them how to do it, or are you inclined to make them feel motivated or inspired to do it? Ooh... So do I want to tell them out, right, or, like, inspire them to figure it out themselves? I've got a real-life example to support my answer. <laughs> That's happened recently. I think I'd motivate them. Me too. Me too. I, I, I'm a D because I, I definitely, um, I definitely, like, will show people certain things and all that. But, um, a big thing, because, like, I want to be a math teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or that's, at least that's, that's what I've historically wanted to do, and I don't know, recently I've been questioning things. But in any case, I have, like, tutoring experience, and right now my mom's actually taking, like, basic algebra <laughs> in community college. <laughs> she's, 
<laughs> She's learning how to graph linear equations right now. Oh, no. <laughs> so I've been helping her with, with the math and all that, and, you know, I made, it, I made it a big point to not tell her the answer to anything, right? Mm-hmm. And instead, work her through it. Not, you know, motivate her to tell me, me what the right answer is, you know? Where, you know, instead of being like, oh, you do this and this, you're like, okay, so what's this? What do you need? What do you have? You know, mm-hmm. do you know how to get there? No? Okay, well, you know, what might this first step be? You know, and, like, I'd walk them through that way instead of just showing them. So I think I'd say D, even though I am definitely a logical thinker and will show people things if, like, I know they're the kind of person who would learn that way. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? For sure. But I'm definitely D. All right. When you're learning about a new subject or reading a fascinating story, do you feel a strong desire to know everything about it? And have all your questions answered, or are you more compelled or inspired by the family's <laughs> mystery surrounding out knowing everything? Hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. I'm A, 100%. I'm D, for sure. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like, I am so excited. My, my... The big reason, like, my, the main reason I'm excited to finish Homestuck is so I can learn everything about Homestuck. Yeah, I know. I'm sitting here <laughs> vibing, like, I, I, I just can't... <laughs> You're like, this is so interesting, all these things that we don't know yet, and I'm like, I want to know this stuff! Like, seriously, like, I love doing the series and all that, and definitely it's worth doing, and I'm very glad we're doing this. But, but you know, there's I that, there's that inkling in me where I'm like, I wish I could just, like, finish reading it and look everything up, you know? I mean, you could... But then in other, yeah, that's no, I, I won't do that to you guys. <laughs> um, but like in other medium, for example, I I am the kind of person who will like, you know, if someone dies or someone like seems to die, I like I don't want to know if they're, I, I don't want to like wait and see if they're dead or not. I will look it up on a wiki and spoil myself. Wow. <laughs> you know, a person falls into a ravine. I'm like, no. And then I go look it up, and it says they're alive or they're dead on the wiki, and I'm like, damn it, I spoiled myself. <laughs> but, At least like, I know. I'm that kind of person who will look like look things up and I'll, I'll, I'll spoil myself tactically. Obviously, I'm not doing that for the series, but like for other medium that I'm consuming in my own, um, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of a problem. Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> that is a bit of a problem. Um, just so, enjoy your fucking so medium of, of entertainment. <laughs> I'm very much I am. <laughs> Listen, I'm the dungeon master. Okay, I'm the kind of person who wants to know everything about everything. Wow. All right. When you hear someone explaining something to someone else in a way that is questionable or in a way that makes you spe- suspect that they don't fully understand the subject they're explaining, are you more inclined to teach them everything you know about the subject or to set the ret- record straight? To set this record straight? Or just cast doubt on the misinformation without offering much in the way of correction? I'll jump right in, set the record straight and everything. I'll provide a correction or two but won't get carried away. Probably stay out of it. I wouldn't be too specific, but I'd let people know it sounds fishy. I wouldn't bother re-educating people, but I'd absolutely punch as many holes in their story as I could. Hmm. I'm definitely between A and B. Because I am the kind of person where, you know, especially if someone like clearly doesn't understand the Sanchez subject, um, I'd, I'd be like, hey, so yeah, I mean, this and this and this. Um, I would definitely probably get carried away, so probably would lean towards A. Um, I think I'd be D. It's just, it's it's a problem I have, honestly, that I talk too much, and I keep talking until I realize that they don't want to hear what I'm talking about. Um, so just Yeah, just like every probably, conversation we've ever had, I... I know, right? Jay hasn't gotten the opportunity to tell him that, to tell me that he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Sorry, I've, guys, I've this is the last video off. on the YouTube channel. <laughs> but yeah, but, I, um, God, I wish I wasn't, but I, I'm unfortunately A... I don't it think that I explain what was go- what what was wrong, or like what like what they got wrong and why it was wrong, and like try to tell mm-hmm. people the opposite. I think I just say this sounds kind of fishy. Maybe try to get them to f- discover it on their own rather than just completely yeah. blindly accepting what anything anyone has to say to them. Because that's yeah, just that's the, the that's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't I can't say that I do that. I feel like this is sounding kind of fishy, guys. Just saying. Um, if you could choose one ability, which would it be? The ability to travel to any period in history on Earth at will, past or future, or the ability to safely travel, such as on a nice ship, anywhere in the universe at will, instantly. 
Definitely time travel, no question. Leaning toward time travel. Are you a travel. time player or a space player? I'm kidding. <laughs> I hate you. Um, leaning toward time travel, but the other sounds pretty cool. Too hard to choose. Leaning toward space travel, but the other sounds really pretty cool. Definitely space travel, no question. Hmm. I think time travel. So, this is a concern. Uh, okay, this is... Okay. So, time travel, I feel like... You know, like, obviously in this scenario, it's probably barring implications, like paradoxes and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but, I don't know, I feel like messing with time would would eventually make me go crazy. Like, just as a person, because, like, simply because of the previous thing about... about you just go to, to the future and to medium. figure out what your life becomes, I feel like. I would treat, well, no, I would treat it as, as like, Flowey did, right? Oh, you fuck. Rem remember Flowey? I mean, I, here, here. Spoiler alert for Undertale if you haven't played it yet, but, like, I think that's, you know, very... How? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, I think this is something that was revealed much later in the game. But Flowey, uh, originally, was a nice person, right? Debatable. When he gained, when he gained determination and was, and was able to save, right? Mm -hmm. And he went through and became friends with everybody. He said this. The first thing he did is he became friends with everybody. All the lines of dialogue, he read all the lines of dialogue. He learned what everybody would do if you did anything. And then eventually he's like, what happens if I killed them? That would happen to me. I'm confident that would happen to me because I would treat life as lines of dialogue, as if I do this, this will happen, and I'll learn every implication of everything. And, you know, if, at first I'll definitely be benign about it, but eventually there's only so far I could go before I'm like, I already know what's going to happen. You know, nothing matters anymore. So I, I couldn't be trusted to time travel. Yeah, just I just because I, I I'd definitely be obsessed agree. with knowing everything. I definitely you agree know? that I, you should never get your hands on time <laughs> travel ever because I feel like first thing, what would happen if I killed Jay? Like <laughs> I could go back and undo it. It's fine. <laughs> no, um, I mean definitely, like definitely in my current state, I would not hurt anybody. But, but if you, I, I just don't trust time. myself. I just don't trust myself to maintain in that state forever. You know, um, and. I could definitely see myself going crazy about how life... Because, like, as much as I want to learn everything about something, you can't mm -hmm. in life, you know? And that is, like, keeping me grounded in some sense. Because if I could learn everything about everything, you about would. everything that has ever happened and everything that ever will happen, I would get obsessed with that, and it would be a problem. Um, That's a bit of an issue, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, so I'm going to have to go with E... I think I'm still leaning towards time travel because I, I don't yeah. think I'd go I mean, crazy. Some people, I mean, especially like, because your, your answer about, you know, the mystery and all that, I think you'd be a much better time traveler than I. I just think it would be so cool. Plus, you could just, like, I wouldn't even be obsessed with trying to figure out what happened yeah. back in, like, different time periods. I just want to experience things. Yeah. Jay, you can take me with you on a, a couple adventures. No, 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 no. But you have control over where I go. <laughs> it's Only like, yeah, but you, I you can, can have cut time me off. travel is if someone makes sure he doesn't do Only shit. Only supervised. <laughs> God. As long as you'll take me anywhere, then sure, buddy. Every once in a while, you can time travel. It's not all the time, because then you'll go fucking crazy. Um, Jay, am I a space player or a time player? Are we going to play Spurb? <laughs> Why do you want to play Spurb so bad now? <laughs> Because fuck the universe, man. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm kidding. I'm, not, I'm only a little bit kidding. What the fuck? I mean, I don't know. The world's pretty messed up. <laughs> if you're working on a project, some, something you're doing for yourself, not for anyone else, so you're obsessively focused on the end result of the project, or you're enjoying the process regardless of how it turns out? Um... So it's very okay. Uh, end result is easily the most important thing. Result is very important, but we like to enjoy it along the way. Result and process about equally important. Enjoying the process is very enjoying the process is easily the most important thing. I'm an E person. So, this is hard because this assumes I ever finish anything. Hey, listen, we fit put out <laughs> videos and finish things. Yeah, no, I know. Um, and I think in, at least in terms of YouTube, I'm definitely a very E person because I don't necessarily have expectations mm -hmm. because like any expectations i try to set i would feel bad about definitely um, that's why i am like my thing about e is definitely like like i think if, if you're gonna do something and if it's for yourself there was this quote from this skateboarder named john hill and he was just like the thing is that to find what you want what you enjoy doing and love doing is that you want to get up in the morning and just do it you, you, and not that you want to wake up and succeed at it, but you just want to do it all the time. Yeah. 
But this is a thing where it's like, especially with creative projects, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like, if I want to make a game, then I don't know. I think the end result is a very important thing. Um, mm -hmm. As much as I would like to enjoy the process, I would be hyper fixated on the end product, you know? That's fair. Um, in that s scenario. So it's a little difficult because I feel like I'd react differently in different scenarios. Because mm -hmm. like for the YouTube project specifically, E all the way. For, um, for if I was working on a video game, A all the way. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and so it's, I don't know what I would, I guess you throw in things like Dungeons and Dragons or other tabletop RPGs and I'd, I'd be very much so E, or I guess D, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll go D. That'll, that'll be what I write down. D. All right. That's fair. I think more often it's, it's, it's like that. Which option best describes what's mo most imp what's more important to you? Understanding yourself, fully knowing who you are, or thinking rationally and making strong decisions? Uh, <laughs> I feel called out. Boop. I don't know who I am. I also... <laughs> I think... I, I want to understand myself. I think understanding myself is definitely more important than, un than thinking rationally. <sighs> Maybe I'm just a crazy person, but I just think that, that it's better to know yourself than to constantly be thinking rationally and making really yeah. strong decisions. See, this is a thing, because I I might even have to go with C in this one, because I'm thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And as much as I, as, like, I really do strive to understand myself, and it's something I struggle with a lot, is identity issues, mm -hmm. and trying to figure who I am. At the same time, um, like, literally, my Finteo and I, like, tried to make, like, axioms of morality. <laughs> oh my god. God, <laughs> this this kid, right? They're they're like a math major, like me, and they're a year younger than me. Yet they um have they they are like they're way ahead in math in terms of me. Like I took calculus three my freshman year of college, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I took you know calculus BC eight B calculus BC, which is calc one and two, my senior year of high school, which mm -hmm. is you know the normal the normal time to take it for people who take it in high school. Teo, this person, like, literally took it their freshman year of high school. <laughs> calculus 1 and 2, right? So they're much, much farther ahead of, me, ahead of me in the math and all that. And, you know, they are a very similar thinker to me in terms of mathematics. And we both love philosophy and morality and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we tried to come up with a mathematical set of axioms, right? Which axioms are, like, the fundamental things you have to assume uh, in order for math to hold up, right? So it's a set of axioms of morality for how to act objectively moral in every situation. <laughs> Wow. Which I don't believe in, in moral objectivity, but it was just fun, a fun project to try to make a set of moral ob like objectivity things, like a set of our axioms in order to um, in order to think rationally perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. In order to do the best thing you could do in any situation by using these axioms. <laughs> Which is a complete E thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, it screams E right there. <laughs> wow. So this is definitely a very difficult thing. I think I'm going to have to just write down C, honestly, even though I don't want to leave neutral answer. Um, because I'm all over the place with this one. But that was fun. We, oh, we also called it our religion, right? No, um, no. Because we basically, like, obviously, like, I, I, I'm publicly, I, I think I'd have to go with agnostic. Um, but, like, I fully respect people who are religious because I think it's a very important thing in a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Um and we only use the word religion because we kind of generalize the term. I just want to talk about it for a second. I'm sorry. I'll stop You're good. in a second. Uh, but basically, we thought of somebody's religion as their set of beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and our axioms were a set of beliefs. There were things we'd have to assume. Because you do have to assume a lot in religion, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's just a thing. You have to assume, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe somebody's personal axiom could be that God exists, or that God doesn't exist. Either way, it's something you have to assume, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then for someone like me, there is just isn't an axiom describing God because I, I can't say if, I can't assume he exists or not. Um, so it's like these kind of things where there's a set of axioms that you have to assume in order to, to function, right? So like a, a big one that everybody would have, or at least every sane person would have, is they have to assume that reality is real. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay, I'll stop talking. But anyways, yeah, we used the term religion for there because we were kind of generalizing it. Anyways, next one. <laughs> I'm Jesus sorry. Christ. 
What idea is more interesting to you? The ability to fully understand your potential as a person or the ability to fully understand all potential consequences of your action before taking them? Mm. What does this mean? Would you rather, like, know how far as a person you can go? But that's just going to demotivate me. Or would you rather fully understand all, all the consequences of your actions? I guess, I, I, e, at first I was like, hold on, but you know, that, because of the time travel argument. But then I'm realizing, well, I can't exactly undo things. Mm-hmm. I just <laughs> go the optimal route. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just 100% life, you know? <laughs> I don't like either of these. Uh, I think I'd go E. Because um, I definitely don't want to know my personal potential because that would demotivate me. Um because if it's not very high, then I just wouldn't do anything. And if it is very high, I'd feel pressured. Um, I don't like either of these. I don't want to know any of these. But for E, like... Yeah, I guess they're... They're not... I guess... If I had to pick one, I'd pick E. Um, and I think... Gosh. I just don't want any of it, so I'm going to pick C. Because that's the no- most neutral I can go. Because I just... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go E. I hate both of those. As much as as much as I'd like to admit that, as much as I'd like to say I don't want to do E, I, I want to do E. I don't. I I don't like either of them because I just <laughs> I don't want to know anything. I want it to just come as it comes. What's better describes your attitude: having great conviction in certain beliefs or ideas you're attracted to, or casting strong doubt on beliefs or ideas you dislike. Oh. Think. I, 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 I was conflicted between A and B for a second, but I'm going to go A. I went A for sure. It, there's, because I, there's not, like, I, I don't like the idea of, of, of casting doubt on beliefs I dislike. I'm not because, cynical. Because people, uh, people have the right to believe what they like, and even if it's not in my personal philosophy to, to agree with them, it's still everyone has their own journey in life, and everyone should come to their own beliefs on their own. Mm-hmm. And, and if they want help, that's totally fine, but they should ask for it. I, I'm totally down with having a discussion with somebody who has a belief I don't necessarily agree with mm-hmm. uh, and respectfully talking about how I don't quite believe in it because of this and then they can respond, I do believe in it because of this and it's an interesting discussion but I definitely don't like especially casting doubt on beliefs I dislike. That's that's kind of rude in my opinion. Definitely. All right. When circumstances are intolerably bad, which are you more inclined to do? Come up with the best alternatives or solutions? And work as hard as you can to make this happen instead, or don't worry about a better alternative. Burn it all down. Whatever follows, you'll just deal with it as it comes. I'm not doing a thing until I have a better solution in place. Inclined to have a solution first, but not absolutely. Right. Inclined to get out of, out the bad situation as soon as possible, but not averse to considering alternatives. Burn it down. I'm absolutely getting out of the bad situation ASAP. We'll deal with the consequences later. Burn it down. Whoa. Did you hear? Did you hear? <laughs> I thought of the Linkin Park song. And yeah, it was, uh, Give me reason to burn I went straight to be more chill, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, Rich set a fire, ready, burn down the house. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'm a B person. I think I'm a D person. That's fair. Yeah, like, I... It's not absolutely the idea. There's definitely situations that are bad enough to just get out of them. Um... But I think most of the time for me, I want to think about it first. Um, Definitely. Because, like, I, you know, a big example of this is I want to get the fuck out of where I live. Because, you know, I'm, I live with my mom still, and I hate it. I need to get my own place, but I don't make enough money to be able to get my own place. Mm-hmm. So I'm not just going to be like, hey, I'm moving out, and then just not have a place to move into. Like, I need to think about it, and I need to figure out a way to, to achieve this and then get out. Um, there's a lot of scenarios like that. So I think I'm definitely a beat person. Mm-hmm. I think I'm a C person because, like, I think C-person. my first thought is I'm get I need to get out of the situation, but I'm still yeah. thinking on the sidelines. Like, what totally if valid. what if there's a, an alternative? I love that Jay and I are the same personality type in terms of MBTI, but we're doing pretty opposite answers, which yeah. is super interesting. If you see right. someone suffering, are you more inclined to do whatever you can to help them get better, or is your instinct to relate to their suffering to empathize without necessarily considering how you can help? <sighs> <laughs> oh boy um uh, d for sure 
Yeah, I guess my yeah, yeah, D. Yeah. I guess I, I I thought I'd have to pick one or the other, but D definitely says that. Um, my first then you'd figure first out first impulse help. is to empathize and like yep. like kind of sit there, let them like cry it out. Then you'd be like, well, what now? What can we do to make it better? Yeah. When someone suffers misfortune so terrible that you know there's nothing else anyone can do for them, are you most inclined to feel horrible that nothing can be done or feel resigned to the sense that this is the way of the world and some things just can't be helped? See, with 11 real quick, I'll say that we, we're both D because we're both feelers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A for sure. Um, yeah. Um, are you most inclined to feel horrible that nothing can be done or feel resigned in the, to the sense that it's just the way this... Oh, A. Yeah. Holy shit. Fuck. I will... Like, somebody will be going through the worst thing, and I'll be over here like, I have no idea what the fuck to do, and I hate myself for this. I really, really want to help this person. I blame I myself this for out. people's misfortune. Oh, yeah. So. Even if they're completely unrelated, I'll totally be like, fuck, I, 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 I am at fault because I can't do anything about it. It's my That's fault. That's how I feel. It's such an issue. Now, now let's go ahead and put in your answers, and we'll press submit on them both. Okay. No, 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 didn't mean What do you do? I clicked the okay. fucking back button with the mouse, okay. you know, like the... Yeah. So what are, you, what are your answers? Right. D. 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 A. 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 E. E. D. So Dade this time? Dade. Daedric. C. C. Oh, wait. What was seven? C. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, I tried not to leave neutral answers, but that one that one was the one, yeah. E. E. Um, A. A. Uh, B. B. D. D. And A. A. All right, back to yours. All right, so we'll submit mine first. What, what's your What's your aspect, Jay? Void. Void. Void bound. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and click the, yours. What's yours? Who? Light. Light. Light was one of the ones that people. Okay, so back before I even started reading Homestuck, people were speculating by my aspect, and light was one of the two that they said I might be, but I did not look into it at all. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, go go ahead and read yours first. Void bound or unafraid of the unknown, natural philosophers, they are content with not having all the answers. Yes! <laughs> Seeing potential while others see empty emptiness. They often seek to cast doubt on norms and not common knowledge. You'll learn more about what it means to be void bound when you see the final result of the nice. test. Nice. Hell yeah, that does describe me. I like that. <laughs> the light bound possesses a keen desire to learn and synthesize. Yep. They are ravenous for knowledge and uh -huh. will go to great lengths to gain it. Although their convictions are strong, their morality is decidedly gray. You learn what it means to be light bound when you see the final results of the test. I think my morality is generally stronger, um, but yeah, it mostly describes me. I guess c considering our, our our light characters in Homestuck is considering really what you thought about time travel, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I mean that's a potential. That's not like a current, but yeah, like. Ooh. So I'm the Torah talk Torah 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 and you are Sagapio. Sagipio. Sign of the Skydiver. Interesting. Alright. If your true sign is Tauritarius and you possess the unique combination of qualities held by all Brian signs, Dirt Streamers, and Voidbound. Cool. Cool. That's a, that's a cool sign. It's a cool sign. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, what is okay? Wait. So it's Taurus is, is clearly Taurus and Sagittarius like combined, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like the though well, at least the suffix. I'm assuming that there's like something around this. Pio is obviously from Scorpio, right? Yeah. So Sagi Pio, like yeah. So so, I'd be very interested in learning about that. Okay, you want to read your your stuff? Sure. Sign class bronze. Bronze signs have a warm and generous disposition, but you might not accuse them of all the first times you meet. <laughs> of it the first time you meet. They have a tendency toward being withdrawn and slow to open up with new people. This can make them come off as arrogant and cold, like they think they're too good for everyone. Finally, this te <laughs> test gets me! 
Though the reality couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, they crave validation and companionship. They are very open-hearted. But if a bronze sign decides to dig their heels in, it can be like talking to a wall, more so than any other sign glasses. Bronze signs have a marked love of creature comforts. They crave stabilities and safety. If they have the means, their home will, will be full of beautiful things. Some might accuse them of being he hedonistic. They think they probably just claim to know what they like. They would probably just claim to know what they like. As lovers, they can be quite needy, wanting assurances of the affection they feel is reciprocated. Maybe because of this, they have a particular affinity for animals. Don't try to speak, break a bronze Jay. sign for you. <laughs> I feel very called out. The resentment Jay, for it. This is pure astrology. Like, this is based on when you were born, by the way, this part. This is this hit me too hard. <laughs> Even if oftentimes they are too polite to say it so. It does. That's pure astrology, it's though. It's so true, though. But it's a chance. It's true, though, Ian. Yeah. It is somehow very true. I don't like that. All right. Lunar Sway. Durs. Durs Dreamer. Durs Dreamers have personalities marked by a distinct and re reckless, restless skepticism. Whatever their waking circumstances, chances are that they will live in a state of dissatisfaction. Rebellion is in their blood, manifesting whether they are fighting back against a fascist dictatorship or the most recent trend in casual footwear. Their streamers are cerebral and self-awake. They have a far better grasp on the landscape of their own minds around the world around them, which they can find alienating, alienating and confusing. But so, so much of their identity is built on control, they will do their utmost to hide any insecurities, often with false humility or self-deprecating. Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't just... No! Self-deprecating humor couldn't be me. What the fuck? Jay's not funny enough to do that. <laughs> they may be inflexible and pessimistic, but they are also great problem solvers facing conflicts set on with shrewd, calculating minds. See one true path among an infinite snarl of wrong ones. They tend to be introverted, but if you win their trust, their streamers are extremely powerful allies. However, they find sincere vulnerability, dif vulner sincere vulnerability difficult and will often keep people at arm's length. Letting go and living in the moment is hard for a their streamer. They constantly look toward the future and analyze the past. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think I think that I think as like a whole, eighty percent fits you. Eighty percent fits me, yeah. Which I mean, considering it's Durst or Prospect, like there's no way it's gonna fit you hundred percent. True. It's it's a binary choice, um, but it's just that going with your aspect and your. Yeah, I think, like you said, I think it's about eighty percent true. Yeah, and, and, and again, like at, because it's a binary choice, it's A or B. Like it's not gonna fit anyone hundred percent. So I think the fact that it eighty percent fits you is very good. Oh yeah, definitely. Except for that whole self-deprecating humor thing. Oh yeah, that's that's part of the twenty percent that doesn't fit you. That's of course, whack. right? Yeah, like who? Yeah, I don't know who these people are? But. Powerful allies. Hell, <laughs> that could be taken way. That wait, 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 wait. Take saying power. No, no, no. Jay, no, the shit. void aspect. The void. The Durst void makes. I, I I understand why you like Roxy so much now. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Mm. Ooh, is there merch? Merch. Is there, there's merch for your side. Merch. That's so cool. He's back. Oh, and I, I saw the little link in the bottom went to a Toritari said HTML, so I think it takes. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. It takes you to where? Probably to where you can buy a shirt for you. That's because it says Toritari said HTML. Oh, I might have to buy one. Shit. Anyway, with the aspect of void, these bound to the those bound to the aspect of void are the universe's secret keepers. The unknown doesn't scare them. Where others might see emptiness, they see potential. A blank page, an empty canvas. That's what the void bound live for. They value mystery and the unexplained, and are not particularly bothered by not having all the answers. While others might be compelled to go out and seek answers, the void bound lead more toward casting doubt on what is already considered fully understood. They don't take much of it faith and would rather live on a state of confusion than believe something that might be untrue or about an <laughs> intellectual authority. After all, in order to, for something new to be built, the old rotting foundation must often be raised. At their best, void bound are wise, intuitive, and vibrant. At their worst, they can be dismissive, indecisive, and apathetic. What do you think about that? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, th cool. I think that one's a little more true than the Durst thing. Well, considering there's there's you know what there's 12 of them yeah exactly it has <laughs> to be I, i'd say that's about like 90 percent true that's good all right all right what's mine 
Excited. Sagipio. Sagipio, the sign of the detective. <laughs> If you're true science Sagittarius, then you possess the unique blah blah blah. blah. Indigo signs are the enthusiasts are the enthusiasts of the sign classes. Friendly and cheerful, their optimism is contagious. Being a well around a well-adjusted indigo sign is always a good time. It's hard not to be drawn into their excitable orbit, just like they are drawn in by anything and everything that piques their interest. And those interests are liable to change at any time. Indigo signs will often surprise their friends and family by declaring they are no longer interested in in what just last week they were claiming was their jam. Shit. <laughs> they're called out. If you catch an indigo signs. Uh, well, I guess I'm no lo- not no longer interested, but not as obsessed, I suppose. Like, it'll, you know, it'll be in the box of interests that I probably won't get to for another couple of years. Uh, <laughs> if you get an indigo sign in a philosophical, philosophical mood, they're going to be unexpectedly poignant and introspective. Oh, shit. The downside of all this jovial enthusiasm is that indigo signs, signs often don't know their own strength. They're known to be careless, both physically and emotionally. Their uh, com- conversations pu- uh, punctuated by jostling elbows and tactless comments. They don't usually mean to offend and are often shocked to find they don't out they upset anyone. When this happens, they can dig their heels in and insist where they did nothing wrong. In romance, indigo signs need partners who can keep up with their expansive personalities as well as forgive them for the occasional heart feeling or two. Yeah, that's happened. Um, I can't... I, I, that's something I've worked on a lot um but it definitely used to be true um i have gone out you know you know obviously seeking knowledge right as a, as a light as a light player mm-hmm. um uh gone out and 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 learned a lot about things so i could be more educated on things so that i have you know a less likely chance of offending anybody um but that that does happen occasionally and you know especially that romance one i feel very called out on like there i've had some problems with my relationships because of that um yeah, so that, that's that's a little too accurate. Uh, Prospit. All right, marked by fle- a flexible op- optimism, the personalities of Prospit dreamers uh, make a reactive and sorry, make what I said are reactive and intuitive. Yeah. They naturally exist in the present rather than uh, look to the future or obsess over the past. When making decisions, Prospit dreamers tend to rely on gut instinct and whatever emotions they're experiencing at the moment. Correct. This makes them quick to act and reliable in a crisis, but can also make them capricious. They have trouble thinking uh, things through, and their the feelings towards specific situations and decisions can change from day to day. They solve problems with creativity rather than cold logic, often seeing multiple options with ease and clarity, because they generally take things as they come. Prospect dreamers are less rebellious than they are adaptable. Instead of struggling against authority, they find a way to coexist with it. Possibly because they are so instinctual and flexible, they like having a defined set of rules, a safety net for their passionate, passionate lives. Naturally trusting, they have trouble with deception or hiding their true selves, and will often worry about what others think of them. The self they project into the world is often not under the control. This is very accurate. Like, this is probably 90% accurate for me. <laughs> 95, maybe. Oh, boy. All right. I'm a prospect dreamer. You're a dream dreamer. It makes so much sense. <laughs> All right. Light. Those bound to the aspect of light are the universe's knowledge seekers. They are, above all, driven to learn and understand. They are great alchemists, able to take multiple sources of information and synthesize alchemist. them into something useful. They are scholars and researchers, absolutely dedicated to knowledge for knowledge's sake. As a pure mathematician who wants to be a college professor to do research, uh, uh, that can't be me. Couldn't be uh, I. They are the ultimate students. Ugh. And all the, the, that conjure up an um, image of people sitting peacefully waiting for knowledge to be brought to them, that couldn't be further from the truth. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> the light bound will go after knowledge or the fierce intensity others may find distasteful. They aren't overly concerned with laws or norms either. They often take rules as simple suggestions instead searching for loopholes or workarounds. At their best, the light bound are resourceful and driven. Their words, they can be fussy, pedantic, and insensitive. You know, f- fair enough. I think this describes me pretty well. Um, 90%. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, there's are P.O. hoodies and stuff. Hey! I want one! And I want... What about yours? Does it... Oh, that's cool. Does it exist? Is that... that yeah. yeah. that's the right thing. Yeah, so for me... Okay, so there it's got... I got like a... you than there are. Wait, no, there aren't. It's just that they... For some reason, these three came up before. Oh, yeah, because it's showing the aspect. Yeah, there's the... Yeah, because you, you can get... It's purple, Lion! I yeah, is purple! Because you're a Durst Dreamer. Wait, 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 wait. My two favorite colors... Like, purple and blue? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh yeah, so so you can so you can get oh gosh. That I hoodie that, looks dope. Yeah, I might have to get that hoodie. That hoodie it's expensive that hoodie but is dope as fuck. One day. Oh shit, that's like fifty bucks. Yeah, I mean I mean it makes sense. Uh, what what's your yeah, you got a hoodie too. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. That's cool. I Jay, if we one day in person, we have to both have T-shirts or hoodies or something that that with our with our true signs on them. I'll be wearing like I'll I'll, I'll layer it right like I'll layer two of these shirts, <laughs> one here, one there. Right. 
and then the hoodie over it. And it'll be Unfortunately, sick. it looks like my light as light aspect and prospect uh, lunar sway shirts are sold out. No, um, but I can grab a, a Sagapio T-shirt or hoodie or something. That'd be great. I'll do yeah. that. Yeah, thankfully, uh, mine's not sold. <laughs> And nobody likes dirt streamers. Come on. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> As a dirt streamer, I'm offended. <laughs> oh, wait. Did I say something insensitive? You fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Kankree's a prospect dreamer. I don't remember. It's because Car like... Carcat's a prospect dreamer, so you'd assume Kankree is too, right? Sure. Um, I... Also... Oh god, I don't remember who the prospect dreamers are. I know um John and Jade are prospect dreamers. Yep. And I think and, and so are so are Jake and, and and Jane. In terms of the trolls, I don't remember. Dude, I can't believe how accurate that was. Right. That's not okay. Gosh. Wait, so Vriska was a light player, Thief of Light. What um oh god, what was her oh, wait, I got notes. I got notes for a reason. Did I write down the lunar sways? Ugh, God, I hope so. Freaking nerd. That hoodie's dope. No, no, that hoodie no, is no, also no, dope. No, no, no. I freaking love how that was a fun test. I liked that. That was that took way longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. Oh, I think it, oh prospect. Okay, so risk is a. Oh God! Imagine if I'm just Riska. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Uh, Risk. I. I would. Vriska would be Scorpio, but I am a Sagapio. The Epio means something. What does the Epio mean? It probably means Prospect. Prospect and light. and light. Yeah. Yeah, because Scorpio. Taurus. That's super cool. Wait. Okay. I want to look at the signs. Let's go back to the sign of zodiac. Um. Do you full list of true signs. Full list of tr true signs. Where do you see oh, that? Oh, uh, click the extended zodiac like uh, header thing, the thing that says the extended zodiac. Mm. And then you scroll down under the signs, hit view full list. Nice. That's cool. This is pretty cool. I also, could have been a, just a regular Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah. So Taurus, prospect and breath, because page of breath was uh was um. Tavros, right? He was just mm -hmm. Taurus. And Taurus, yeah, Taurus, Torsi, Tornius, Toracorn, 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 Toratanius, Torpio, Torpio, Tora, Torbjorn, Torlo, Torser, Tormina, Tracer, <laughs> Trace, Motherfucker. Dude, that's so cool. That was such a cool test. I enjoyed that. Uh, pious. <laughs> Quiet, you. One of the one of the Pisces was pious. Motherfuck. God damn those pious people. Motherfucking pious people. Am I right? Oh gosh. Okay. People. I want to read about the aspects though. Like actually, can we do that real quick? I've been told if we get look into the aspects too much, is spoilers. No, that's the classes. Oh. Yeah, we have to learn about the classes later. But like, if I just want to like know more about these aspects. Because then we can read all of them instead of just... I, I, we don't have to, but I, I want to. <laughs> That's okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Um, do, you want, uh, do you want to just like go back and forth then? Everybody? Yeah, you can do time. Okay. Uh, those bound to the aspect of time are fighters, full stop. Their lives are often marked by struggle, not so much because fate has it in for them, but because they are fundamentally incapable of just accepting things as they come. They value action over passive acceptance, even if that may not be the wisest or safest, sa safest choice. Don't try to tell a time bound to sit and st still look pretty. They're very goal focused and tend to value the destination over the journey, and won't find them making that journey in any traditional sort of way. To quote cheesy posters found on many a guidance counselor's wall, impossible is just a word. If you need a miracle, they are who you call. At, the, at their best, the time bound are empathetic and relentless problem solvers. At their worst, they are ruthless, defensive, and impulsive. Dave. Yeah, pretty much. Space. It's so beautiful. <laughs> the elegance. And the story right. of why... Sorry, that's stuck in my head. <laughs> I love space. Um, 
Oh, that's so cool. No, I just... <laughs> sorry. Um, thus found the aspect of space art, Markiplier, as the name suggests, concerned with the big picture. They are patient, masters of the art of wait and see, and are inclined, inclined to take things as they come. Nope. That isn't me. Couldn't be... <laughs> Patient master of the art of wait and see. I agree. No, like, like, not, not joking at all in the slightest. Like, definitely not me. Fine, <laughs> <laughs> it's seriously. To say that their pushovers are willing to let injustice lie, they just choose their battles widely, understanding that sometimes you have to let something burn to the ground in order to build it back better and stronger than before. It's the fact they tend to be, they tend to be innovators concerned with creation and redemption. Catch them recycling the old to make the new, the fresh and the beautiful for the space, space bound. The space bound, the journey is as, if not more important than the destination. How they do something is as important as what they do. At their, at their best, they are steady, impartial, and creative. Their worst, they can be detached, apathetic, and vague. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's Jade. Mm -hmm. Also, um, um, I can't. Oh my god. I remember the fucking name. Why can't I remember... The a radio. <laughs> a radio is a time player. Space was um was the who was who was the troll space player? Fuck. I'm not sure. Oh, Kanaya. Yeah. The, the sylph of space. All right, heart. Those bound to the aspect of heart are very concerned with their favorite subject themselves. It wouldn't be a stretch to call them self obsessed. Do you remember what uh jerks <laughs> aspect was? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Heart. He was the Prince of Heart, right? I think so. Self obsessed, but not necessarily in a, in a negative way. They simply want to understand the one thing we all stuck with, with our, for our entire lives, i.e., our own minds. Forging an identity is extremely important to the heart bound, and every decision and action goes towards building a coherent nor narrative of their own story. That isn't to say heart, uh, heart bound don't care. Uh, deeply for their friends and allies. They just have a tendency to assume that everyone is concerned with that identity as they are. They are excellent at putting on and taking off masks as the situation calls for them. At their best, they are competent, imaginative, and steady. At their worst, they can be overbearing, inflexible, and cold. And I think um, Nepeta was also a heart player. Or was it the Rogue of Heart? I'm not sure. Nepeta, Rogue of Heart. Yep, I'm right. Nice. Mine. And, all right. Uh, as you were saying, is there anything? No, go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, those bound to the aspect of mind are, you guessed it, the universe's greatest thinkers. Huh. Huh. But don't for a second huh. think that means that they have all the answers. They are very concerned with remaining rational, and they have such a firm hold on the constant conjunction of their thinking. It's easy for them to see the multitudes of the choices laid out before them. Drop to them leaves them fr frozen and un unable to act. That said, when a mind bound finally launches into action, they can execute a plan with unbelievable grace and precision. Their identity is fluid fluid it can change from day to day from thought to thought from interaction to interaction remaining logical is more important to them than building up to a solid foundation of self at their best they are great innovators architects and creators at their worst they can be nasty inflexible and indecisive that's terezi mm -hmm. hope all right those bound to the aspect of hope what oh, by the way jake and uh and and eridan mm -hmm. and cronus right. fuck that guy <laughs> Those bound to the aspect of hope are driven first and foremost by their conviction. They do right for right's sake, and are quick to come to the aid of anyone who, who, who they deem to be experiencing injustice. That said, their views of the world can be quite black and white, so they can, uh, what they see as the right thing may not always be a universally accepted view. They put great value in the power of imagination, the ability to dream of a better and more beautiful future. If anyone could dream a better world of existence, it would be one of the hope bound. They may sound like all sunshine and rainbows, but they aren't adverse to a little destruction, especially if they think they can replace it they can replace it with something better and more just. At their best, hope-bound players are positive, caring, and warm. At their worst, they can be narrow-minded and selfish. Ooh. That, That's a fair description of all of the hope players that we've met. True. Jake, luckily, being a positive hope player. True. <laughs> all right, Rage. <laughs> Here we go. At their worst, they can be <laughs> narrow-minded and selfish. Yeah, Cronus, you <laughs> fuck. And Aridin, but lesser... We don't we we don't bully Aridan anymore after we met that son of a bitch. Oh, I, I said lesser yet. <laughs> well, All right, rage. We, we got the, the Makaras. The Makaras. Those bound to the aspect of rage are bringers of chaos. Chaos. I don't know. That sounded like something. Chaos control. <laughs> 
They possess great contempt for lies or false ideas, including the stability that false ideas can impart. To them, the truth the true is far more important than the good. They would tear down a system just to destabilize it if, by reckoning, it is by, built on faulty premises. Often the rage brown prefer to be riddled with lies and foolishness and obedient masses. They are ringers of confusion and doubt, and they can be frustratingly difficult to convince otherwise when they have attached themselves to an idea. If they sound dangerous, they are. The rage bound tend to be most volatile and unpredictable to the aspect of the aspects. At their best, they are original, revolutionary, and fearless. At the worst, they are cruel, uncompromising, and vicious. We read the that. heroes of rage. Light. All right. Yeah, we read light. We read void. Breath. Oh shit! They're like right next to each other. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rage obviously the Vakaras. Light is obviously Rose and um, Riska as well as Arania. Um, void is is Roxy as well as Equius and the other Zahak, which we've not met yet. Yep. We're gonna meet him tomorrow. Oh, hopefully. All right. Uh, breath. breath. Those bound those bound to the aspect of breath are above all expansive. Flexible and driven, they leave an impact wherever they go. This is uh, first this is John and um and Tavros. And, yep. and the other Nitrum, which we'll meet soon. Alright. Flexible and driven, they leave impact wherever they go. Like the breeze itself, they're able to sweep others up to ca to carry along in their wake. But also like the breeze, they can be difficult to catch hold of or hold of or tie down. Although the breath bound do make very good leaders, breath tends to be a very personal aspect. Often heroism comes along as an offshoot of their pursuing their own person them pursuing their own personal stories. They lead by example and will routinely be surprised that others look up to or feel inspired by them. They have a tendency to underestimate themselves, and not always out of poor self esteem, they were just doing their own thing. At their best, breathbound are motivated, adaptable, and forward thinking, but at their worst they can be volatile, avoid and indelible. Fun. That that's a pretty good uh, like John and, and Tavros. Yeah. We'll bring them blood. Blood. Blood, blood. car cat. Oh, gallons of the stuff. And cangre. Gallons of the stuff. You bring them all that they can drink and it'll never be enough. So <laughs> bring them blood. Blood blood <laughs> Something, 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 yeah. something, something. That's the bonus track off of Michael Michael Romeo, it's his Black Parade album. Yeah. I love that album. Anyhow, those bound to the aspect of blood draw their strength from bond, from the trust and camaraderie that blooms among Car the of people who all share a single vision. <laughs> BS! <laughs> Alright. Um, draw their strength from bonds, from the trust and camaraderie that blooms among a group of people who all share a single vision. Bloodbound are absolutely leaders, but they inhabit more of an inspirational role than a commanding one. They are prophets rather than gen generals, Jesus, giving others the strength and motivation to yeah. keep fighting. Bloodbound can dispense excellent advice, even when their own lives and interpersonal relationships are disaster. They can be very do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do types. A bloodbound can often be found on, on a sinking ship, forcing an endeavor forward with a sheer stubborn force of will. No matter how p th bad things go, a bloodbound can always count on friends and allies. Their best, they are charismatic, uplifting, and magnetic. At their worst, they can be sullen, unkind, and set in their ways. That is a good description of Carcat and Kankri from what we know of them. Mm -hmm. Alright, life. Obviously, Carcats are all types of charismatic, uplifting, <laughs> and magnetic. Of course. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, so life is um, Jane as well as um, Feferi and Mina. Those bad of the aspect of life are the universe's healers. They are concerned with the betterment of themselves and those around them, as well as the onward march of positive progress. Deeply empathetic, they have an intuitive understanding of the other's suffering and, uh, and the best way of righting those wrongs. If you're poisoned, chances are the lifebound will have something for what ails you. Th this applies to both physical and mental suffering. Though it might not be a cure you'll like, they also have a tendency to put others' needs before their own, which never ends well for anyone, because the lifebound can go bitter if they feel their own self-care has been shunted to side. At their best, they are great listeners, caretakers, and nurturers. At their worst, lifebound is, are passive-aggressive and pushy. They're certain uh, they know best. Doom. Solix and, um, and, and, uh, we just met them. M Mituna. Those bound to the... Well, those bound to the aspect of doom are fate's chosen sufferers. It may not sound like an overly pleasant aspect to be aligned with, but it does come along with great wisdom and empathy. The b doom bound understand that misery loves company. Misery loves my company. <laughs> Sorry, that's a fun. I have a song for everything today. It's a Metallica song. Um, and they are ready and willing to provide said company. The doom bound won't fix you. Uh, I, I wanted to say something about Coldplay. They aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> they're com 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 
Commissarators? Yeah. Commissarators? Sure. Commissarators. Aware that sometimes the only thing you can do for a person is let them know that they are, are not alone in their suffering. Please ma stop me from making musical references. They are not the advice friend. They're the friend you go for, you go to when you need, need to vent about a rough day at work. They're not necessarily noble martyrs. Either the doombound can come, become quite irate about their lot. At their best, they are wise, kind, and non-judgmental. At their worst, bitter, resentful, and fatalistic. Interesting. Quite interesting. Yeah, I feel like this is the... This that, that, that was the one that, that I feel like I can't necessarily directly relate to Solix mm -hmm. or, or Matuna, like, as much as the rest of them. But that is... But, but, I mean, like, that's definitely not unlike him. It's just interesting. I feel like maybe we just didn't know a lot of that part of Solix's character. Definitely. But that's interesting. All right. Well, I still can't this believe... video lasted much longer than I thought it would. Wait, re... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> right? I thought this was going to be a short video. I thought this was going to be like 20, 30 minutes, like, dude. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, so we learned all about the aspects and, and, and the lunar sways, and we learned our own. I still can't uh, believe then... we were opposites on that. I can't. That was super interesting. It, it's so weird how we had such different answers. We're both ENFPs. <laughs> kind of whack. <laughs> And you're a, a void player, and I oh gosh, and I'm a light player. That's so cool. That is. Pretty Jay, cool. what? You're Roxy, and I'm Rose. Holy shit! I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's great. Wait, I thought so, Rose yeah. was a dirt streamer. Ro oh, yeah, they're both dirt streamers, but I meant like light versus. Yeah, light versus. Freaking um, void. Void, yeah. All right. Also, oh my God! Wait, wait. Okay, sorry. Go look at the. Uh, I just this means nothing. But look at the aspect like chart. I think it's at the top. We are opposite on it. Direct opposites. That's whack. <laughs> right. I don't like <laughs> it. That's so interesting. I, I, that probably doesn't actually mean anything, but I noticed that and I had to point it out. <laughs> Either way. All right. Do you have any any parting thoughts, right. Ian? I think that's it. That was super interesting. Um, uh, stay tuned for another video when we finish Homestuck about us figuring out what class we are. Yeah. Um, being a while. We were told to wait until we finish Homestuck for that. Definitely. Um, but for now, you can be satisfied with knowing our, uh, our aspect and our lunar sway and therefore our true sign. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all you beautiful, valid people out there, thank you very much for tuning in to whatever the fuck we call this. Um, the Extended Zodiac Quiz. Just realize how much cooler than I and I am. You know, it's fine. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Anyway. I'm, I'm going to buy a shirt, I swear. If it's going to happen. Yeah, look at all this <laughs> cool shit. No, look at my cool shit, not I and his cool shit. Look at but both the cool shits. No, I have cooler shit than you. Sorry. Um, If you enjoyed that, please leave a like. It would be greatly appreciated. Comment down below. Tell us what you thought. Subscribe with post notifications if you want to see what we're doing next. Join the Discord. There's some beautiful people there that would love to meet you. And, uh... Follow the Twitter. Yeah, tw yeah. Twitter exists. I forgot Twitter existed. Follow the Twitter because I'll post on there eventually. Nice. Alright, with that, thank you all very much for watching. We love you very much, and we'll see you in the next one. Love y'all. Bye! Bye-bye. Ian, that took so fucking long! <laughs>